Hey everyone, and welcome to a massive, massive video on the channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the most dangerous, deadly, unsafe levels in the back rooms. Now, I haven't done a long video like this in a while, so I thought it was about time. So just sit back, relax, grab something to eat, and get ready to hear about the terrors of the back rooms. Also, help me get to 500k subs so I can buy the backroom's pants. I hate asking for subs because everybody does that, but these pants are fire, what can I say? Alright, let's get into it. First up for the video is a level called End of the Freaking World. Now obviously it doesn't say freaking, it says something else, but I'm not gonna say that, alright? We're family friendly here. This level is classified as a class 4 level and is unsafe and unsecure with a medium entity count. Now a disclaimer, pretty much every level in this video will be unsafe and unsecure so just get used to hearing it. This level looks like what's left of a nuclear attacked city. There's crumbled buildings and debris everywhere, but there's no radiation which is good. The level itself makes up an entire city, and there's hounds, death rats, stalkers, and human bandits running around the streets at all times, and that's what makes it dangerous. Not very fun. On top of a city being nuked, the level is also non-Euclidean, and it shows so many non-Euclidean properties that three-fourths of the buildings are just wacky. These properties cause things to loop, or for buildings to suddenly shrink and get big again, or for things to just glitch inside of each other, it's crazy. Now there are actually different sections of the city, like supermarkets, grocery stores, malls, and military bases, all of which are completely abandoned and have old, unused stuff just laying around. Also, an interesting note is that the calendars inside of the mall, they date December 31st, 1999. So maybe in this backrooms level, Y2K actually happened. Maybe. There's also some different human outposts on this level, with each of them living in different buildings, and each of them have about 100 people in them. And they all live just scattered throughout the city. Now those bandits that I mentioned earlier are the biggest threat here because they're sentient human type things, and they run around in groups of 7 to 12, and they can use weapons. Like I said, they seem like they're humans, but they're kind of decayed in a way. I don't know, it's weird. But yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just a huge city that looked like it got nuked, and there's a bunch of stuff in the streets that wants to hurt you. To enter this nuclear city, you can swim through the blue channel, which I made a video about, and you'll see it there, and you can just jump right into it. And to exit, you can just go to the edge of the city where the quote-unquote map ends, which is the blue channel, and you can jump right back into the blue channel and swim to another level. Fun! Now next up, obviously, is the blackout level, and it's considered to be a parallel level to the whiteout. It's classified as a class 5, so it's really dangerous, and has creatures, which completely contrast the whiteout. And it mirrors the whiteout level in its specific design and layout, but instead of it being perfectly white, it's an abandoned, nasty house covered in cobwebs and broken floorboards. Smilers and hounds are the main entities here that roam the halls, but sometimes random voices have been heard echoing down the hallways, so there might be something else down there. There's also been reports of random screaming, so uh, yeah. The windows on this level can actually be looked out of, unlike the whiteout level where if you look out those windows, you'll just see white. Here you'll see a field at nighttime. You can't break the window to go out there and explore, but the field is the exact same location and thing you see out of every window, so it might be a fake thing, but we don't know. Sometimes wanderers report looking out those windows and seeing tall shadows with white eyes walking around, which is scary to say the least. The level also has a level exclusive entity called the Bride. She looks like a pale ghost in a wedding gown and normally just follows people around the level. She's sometimes heard and even been seen crying in random rooms. So that's kind of sad. The maker entity from the whiteout seems to have some sort of connection to the bride because there's pictures of them together on the blackout level, but he's never been seen physically here. So like, maybe they're not able to get to each other. I don't know. There's no basis here and every group that comes here hasn't made it out to tell the tale, because it's really dangerous from the entities. 
And the only way to enter the level is to go really deep into the whiteout until you find a gray door that opens up to the blackout and when you go through it, it shuts and locks itself. And there really isn't even a confirmed exit, so it looks like you're doomed to wander the Smiler and Hound infested halls with the Ghost Bride Crying Lady following you. Sounds fun to me. Level 611, aka The Maze, The Creatures, and The Monster. Yes, that's actually the name. Level 611 is its own classification called Class Hunting Grounds, which means a hostile entity oversees it always, and you're constantly in imminent danger. Fun, right? The level is made up of a thick network of rundown hallways that look like different kinds of architectures. For example, one could be a sewer system hallway and one could be like a hospital mental asylum hallway. All of the halls are different except in a couple ways, but one of those ways is that they all have an insane amount of gory waste that's scattered all over the surfaces. Yes, you heard that right. Intestines, bodily fluids, and other excrement is literally all over the walls and the floors and ceilings. There's also a slick membrane coating all over everything uh, that the level seems to produce itself, like it's a living thing, so weird. The halls have pipes that jut out from the walls and the ceilings and they kind of can cut off paths sometimes, which makes this level pretty unexplorable. The floors of every tunnel are all different types of tiles that have been broken or caved in. This is actually one of the most dangerous parts of the level since you're just as likely to get hurt by the floor as you are by the entity I'm about to tell you about. So this level is actually confirmed to be Euclidean, which means it does obey the natural physics and geometry of our world, but there are still some really weird things and turns and curves that happen in the halls that don't make any sense really, like sharp right angle tunnels or paths that just go straight up in the air. It's weird, funky stuff. I don't know. The lights in this level can range from candles to fluorescent lights, and depending on where you are in the level, the light can be really bright or it can be pitch black. Every once in a while, you'll run across a random room on this level as well. These are very rare to find, but if you do run across one, you'll notice rotting wood furniture inside of them, and sometimes there'll even be fresh fruits on the furniture. What? No one knows how or why the fruits are there. They're just there. But random fruit does not compare to the scariest part of this level, which is the entity that lives here called the Sentiole, or Entity 611-1. The second a wanderer enters this level, the sential entity starts tracking them. No matter how close or far away they are, it'll find you. And when it reaches you, you'll be attacked by a huge blade that's hooked together by chains. Now the following, what I'm about to say are some of the observations that have been made about this entity. It can run at inhuman speeds, so really fast, and can lift and throw practically any object. It's got insane strength. It's survived fire salt attacks, and it can hear a wanderer from miles away. Uh, so yeah, this thing pretty much cannot be stopped. The physical description of the Sentiole seems to change from person to person, but the overwhelming kinda description is pretty much the same. So far, it's that it's a human figure that stands at about 8 feet 2 inches tall, or about 2.5 meters, with dirty, cracking brown skin, with wound-type markings all over it. Its face, arms, and legs all have what seem to be metal armor on them, so those parts of the body can't be really seen well, but from what people can see, you get the description I just said. Some people think that the armor is actually hurting the entity, like it was put on there by somebody else by force, since it kind of looks like it's shoved into the entity's skin, but that's not confirmed. This entity also appears in a text from the Lost Colony, which has supposedly existed in the backrooms for a long time, and that text talks about how dangerous the Sentiole is, so evidently they've known about this thing for a long time, and they've also known to avoid this level at all costs because of it. As far as bases and outposts go, well, there aren't any obviously, and you can enter this level from any indoor industrial building that's kind of dilapidated or falling apart on any other level, and all you have to do is walk through a door inside of one of those places, and you'll be sent here. You can exit through randomly appearing areas that seem to have like a no-clipping energy to them. Now these will appear and you'll be able to see them because like the air behaves differently, so when you do see one, you need to use it because there's no telling when another one will happen. And you don't want to be stuck here with a giant humanoid with a blade chain thing chasing you. Trust me. 
It's level 171, aka the Grand Illusion level. This level is actually found in the Meg classified database, and itself it's classified as a class 5 rating. I just say class like 80 times. At first, when you get to the level, it looks like a 1930s style atrium where slow jazz is playing and there's like a nice fragrance in the air. And then this is all well and good. And so the wanderer starts to walk further and further into the level, it all disappears. The chill jazz area behind you will eventually fade away, and that nice smell you smelled in the air will disappear, and it'll start to smell rotten. This smell is described as the smell of mothballs and rot, so a very strong chemically smell. The calm lights you saw earlier will turn into what's known as signal lights, which I'll talk about in a second, and something called the blight will appear when those lights go off. The Blight is apparently an entity swarm full of hostile entities that attack as soon as the Wanderer is seen. There are a bunch of different entities that make up a Blight, but none are listed on the Wikidot, so I don't know. The common theory is that the Blight and the Signal Lights have some sort of symbiotic relationship because the lights will flicker on and off at a five minute interval. So they'll be on for five minutes and off for five minutes. When they're on, the atrium and the jazz scene is what you see. You smell that nice smell and you're just chilling. That's when the lights are on. But when the lights go off, that illusion falls apart and the level turns into complete darkness. That good smell turns into a horrible one and the music becomes slow and distorted. This is when the blight seems to be visible to the wanderer because when the lights are on you can't see these blight hordes but when they're off you can so pretty much it's just a big game of red light green light if you know what that is when the light's red you stop when the light's green you go but in this instance when the signal lights are on you're fine you're just in that chill jazz area but when they turn off is when the entity swarm starts so this is a summary of a memo that meg has on the website about this level because I can't be bothered to read the whole thing on here. I'm just going to summarize it. Pretty much this level is dangerous because of its non-Euclidean properties. So all the information on it is being removed for safety reasons. If you want to get here for some reason, you can get there by getting lost on level 5 in a really far out wing. However, the level has apparently been removed from level 5 due to an unknown catastrophe. Nice. So if you get to this level, try to get out before it turns dark. You got 5 minutes because when you get to the level, it's light but after five minutes, it's gonna be dark. Shady Gray is classified as class undetermined and is a collection of extremely unstable sublevels that are really rare and hard to get to. All of the levels are colored in a grayscale black and white format, and the environments inside of the sublevels are extremely dangerous and very, very unstable. Meg has sent multiple agents to this level to explore its sublevels to try to get more information about it, but only one has come back alive. There are eight confirmed sublevels that have been discovered so far but there might be more than that we don't know and not all eight of them are documented only five of them are documented so we're going to get into them right now the first sub level is level zero zero or z zero but i'm not going to say z zero because level zero sounds better and this is the most stable part of the shady gray it's the only sub level that you can actually explore without really much danger being there that is as long as you escape it before nighttime this sub level looks like a jungle but it's black and white just like all the other sub levels and the trees here are really glitched and they're glitched inside of each other most times. But besides that and the black and white color scheme, the level is pretty stable. So level zero is where you actually enter the shady gray level at. You'll wake up in the shack you see on the screen right now in the middle of the jungle there. This specific sublevel has a day-night cycle of about 12 hours, but it doesn't gradually change from day to night like it does in real life. Instead, it instantly changes like a light switch being turned on or off. This is really dangerous and I'll explain why later. But the reason I was saying that the area is somewhat safe is because during the day there are no, like none, no entities here at all. But at nighttime, the level gets flooded with them. When it does get nighttime, all the light immediately goes away and it gets so dark that you can't even see your hand right in front of you. Also, flashlights and stuff don't work here either. You'll start to hear howlers howling in the distance about five minutes into the darkness. And this is the last chance you have to get out of there before you're just toast. Now, the entities that are actually here are unknown since they can't be seen, since it's, you know, pitch black. But it's theorized that they have night vision so they can hunt down wanderers easily. During the daytime in the sublevel, you can see lakes and rivers that are full of almond water but when it turns nighttime those same lakes and rivers turn into liquid pain somehow even if you put the almond water in a bottle from the lake 
it'll turn to liquid pain at nighttime. You can get to the next sublevel below this one by getting a branch and drawing in the mud. This will open up the floor and you'll fall directly into the next part. The next sublevel is called level 1. This is a very unstable area that looks like a black and white mansion. When you fall into this mansion, you'll be in the lobby part of it, and you'll notice that the furniture here is really glitchy, and it's really just distorted. If you touch the furniture, it'll cause your body to start glitching and distort you on an atomic level, so don't do that. Other than the glitchy furniture, this level is just a grayscaled mansion. But there is one entity here, and it's very dangerous. He's known as the Landlord, and he wears a suit and a fedora, and is always carrying around a briefcase with him. If the Landlord sees you, he'll start walking towards you, and if you run away, all the exit doors will instantly be closed and locked. When he gets to you, he will unalive you for trespassing, loser. There's been some reports of people being able to escape the Landlord by shooting him, then escaping from there by breaking a door down and getting to the next sublevel, but this hasn't always worked. The next sublevel is sublevel 2, which is a huge forest blanketed in snow. And lucky for you, this sublevel is one of, if not, the safest sublevel in the Shady Grey. It's also the most explored one too. Now it doesn't make any sense that this level is covered in snow, because it's actually hot all the time here. In fact, it's so hot that people have literally ceased to exist because of sunburn and sun exposure or heat stroke. Almond water can stop these effects though. So just make sure you bring some with you. This level appears to have a sun that shines all the time, and snow never melts, even if it's getting direct exposure to the sun and the heat. Since the level is black and white, like all the levels here, it's literally impossible to tell if you're sunburned, unless you feel it, since you can't see color in any grayscale place. There are places to not get exposed to the sun though, like under the trees in the forest, or the small meg base that's located here. The base is made up of three people, and they've explored most of this part of the level. Other than the snow melting and the direct heat and sunlight, there's nothing really special about this level except for the one entity that lives here called the Fallen Angels. They look like humans with huge black wings and robes, and their body looks like they've been injured with holes in them, but they claimed that they faded away, and that's how they turned out to be a fallen angel. It's assumed that they were people at one point, but that's not confirmed since they never want to talk about how they came to be that way. They're passive and they will talk to you if you confront them, but they get very aggressive if you mention level 71, so don't. Getting out of the sublevel is simple, you just have to ask a fallen angel to send you on to the next sublevel, and then they'll throw you through the ground right into sublevel 3. So now we're at the fourth sublevel, which is sublevel 3 because we started at zero. It's confusing. This is the weirdest sublevel in the Shady Grey. It's an infinite black and white ocean with occasional islands. But the water here has clocks floating in it. And these clocks have some sort of time altering abilities within them. And they all do different things, but more on that in a second. The water of the ocean is very corrosive and toxic, and it seems to be like a weird mixture of normal distilled water and motor oil or mercury, okay? Meg has found four different types of clocks floating in the ocean. Analog, digital, grandfather clocks, and even watches. Now remember when I said that the clocks can alter time? Well, it typically happens when you touch them. Analog clocks themselves are the safest to touch because they'll send you to level 2, or to the next sublevel, but the analog clocks are really rare to find. Digital clocks, however, are extremely dangerous. If you pick one up, you'll be sent to level 195, which is a level full of dangerous, mysterious properties. The good news is that the digital clocks are also pretty rare. Now, normal watches, like you are on your wrist, are really weird. They're considered an offensive weapon on this level because if you put one on your wrist, you can point your hand and watch forward towards a person and it'll send that person to their last day alive. Nice. This could mean instantly unaliving them, or it can mean sending them to their demise by getting attacked by an entity. There's only one reported case of someone living through a watch attack, and it's because somehow this dude got sent to be unalived by a wretch, and he escaped the wretch, and he was missing for over a year before Meg found him. The grandfather clocks, you know those huge ones, do a really weird aging thing. If you throw someone onto a floating grandfather clock, they'll either age up to an old person or de-age to a baby. This specific sublevel of Shady Grey is virtually impossible to set up an outpost since there is constant watch wars happening between the people that live here and Meg themselves. Meg barely even got a base up here and they're under constant attack by the natives of this land. 
There are also speedboats on this level as well, but most of them are with Meg or the small groups, so that fact was kind of useless now that I think about it. So the last stable sublevel is sublevel 4, which is the fifth level. You can only get here by touching an analog clock on the last sublevel, which will teleport you here, and you'll land in a river. The water is safe to touch, but not to consume, and the rivers are surrounded on both sides by a huge city and skyscrapers. The city area looks really similar to level 11, except it's in the black and white grayscale, obviously. But a lot of the buildings here are glitchy and distorted. You can only enter the skyscrapers by breaking in because the doors are locked, but that's not a good idea since they're literally infested with aggressive entities. The streets inside the city are crawling with armed facelings that will attempt to mug you if they even see you. You can make them docile though if you give them almond water. The mangled entity is also very common here, and they're always looking for prey. But the armed facelings and the mangled are not the only problems here. The temperatures change really quickly, and natural disasters like blizzards or tornadoes can happen at random, so it's constantly in environmental danger too. It's also dark all the time, so. There's no purposeful way you can escape this level, you just have to accidentally no clip. Cool. So the next part is the last documented part on the wiki dots, and it's called the Lost Hope. This is the part of the Shady Grey where stability itself just stops. It's impossible to escape, and it'll drain all the hope you have left if you had any to begin with. The walls of the Lost Hope are wobbly and distorted, and pretty much anyone who makes it here doesn't make it out. After this, there's virtually nothing documented except Too Far and The End, which don't have any words, they're just pictures. Level negative 2 is classified as a class 4 survival difficulty, and is unsafe and unsecure, with a medium entity count. Also, sorry, my voice is kind of weird. My nose is stopped up. What's new? The entire area of level negative two is actually split between four different sub areas, which I'll explain in a second. The whole level is considered to be dangerous all the time because there are multiple undocumented hostile entities and multiple properties that are not understood about it all. And the level itself actually emits a really weird energy that attracts wanderers to it as soon as they get close to an entrance door to the level. It sort of lures them in. No one knows how or why this happens, so that's pretty creepy. Now I'm going to get into the four different areas of the level. The first part is called the pool. This area is a huge flooded unfinished basement with wood pillars and support beams placed all around. There's also a bunch of pipes and vents on the walls and ceilings, and there's actually uncovered electrical wires that run across the walls as well. That's a recipe for disaster. The only light source in the area are these orange light bulbs on the roof that kind of emit a really calming glow. The water that's flooded this basement is actually almond water, but it's not even safe to drink because it's really high in dirt and iron content, and apparently there's like a harmful bacteria that lives in the water as well, so that's no fun. One of the weird things that happens in this section of the level is that sometimes you can get teleported from one spot in the water to another spot. Like you could just randomly be walking and then be teleported to a completely different hallway. Other than the teleporting though, and the other stuff I mentioned, nothing else has really been discovered about this area. And the only really weird thing, minus the flooded floors of course, is that all the hallways in this zone take only right turns, 90 degree angle turns to be exact. There's never a rounded turn or a hallway, and some of the halls themselves are so short and so skinny that you could get claustrophobia from it. So if you get claustrophobia, don't come here, and if you have hydrophobia and claustrophobia, definitely don't come here. How deep the water is literally changes all the time, so it's advised to be extremely cautious when you're walking around the level. The safest spots in this zone are always where those orange lights are glowing, because when you get there you can see and it's less dangerous, and when you escape that light area and it's all dark, wanderers have reported extreme paranoia. The water itself has had some weird occurrences too, like one time it apparently moved on its own and tried to talk to someone by spouting up water in the air, so the water might be sentient, we don't know. To get to the next zone that I'm about to talk about, you have to walk through the halls of the flooded zone and eventually they'll change into the next level and become less flooded gradually. However, in these halls, there's actually an entity called the Screamers that live here. They're tall humanoids that have no face except a huge mouth, and literally all they do, their only purpose, is that they scream at the top of their lungs at wanderers and paralyze them with fear. The screams can only be heard by the wanderer that's being attacked though, so if you get screamed at, no one's gonna come to help you because they can't hear it. Okay. 
So if you make it past the screamers and the flooded, claustrophobic hallways, the next part of the level is called the Hall of Dole Flames. And this is a huge expanse of baby blue concreted walls and ceilings with white carpet on the floor. This entire zone has these blue lanterns that emit this really weird blue light that basks the walls and the ceiling. Speaking of the walls, the walls themselves look like they're kind of vintage from the Victorian era specifically, and there's paintings on the walls from the 1600s. There's been a bunch of reports in this area actually about some weird sounds that happen, like a distorted piano playing Beethoven or the sounds of screaming. The main entities in these blue halls are actually skin stealers and screamers, of course. Not too bad. But in very rare cases, the blue lights here will turn red, which actually means that you should stop moving instantly until they turn blue again. Because if you keep walking when they're red, you'll literally and physically fade from existence. The next zone is called the Abyss. I wonder if it'll be scary or not. This area is a huge void type zone where everything surrounding you is pitch black except what's right in front of you. There are some weird structures in this zone too. Like there's entire pieces of furniture and kitchen appliances that are literally made from forks and knives and stuff like that, just kitchen utensils. And there's also this really faint ticking noise that can be heard wherever you are in the Abyss. And I guess I was wrong about this zone being scary, because it says right here on the wikidot that the zone is actually safe. You love to see it. Most wanderers end up finding the exit to the entire level here in the abyss. So the areas past this zone are mostly undocumented, except for one, which I'll talk about now. The last zone is called the Kafkaski Maze. Kafkaski Maze? I think that's how you say it. This zone is a huge maze made out of big bushes with purple leaves. And there's actually a sky here, and it's bright blue with clouds, and the grass on the ground is also purple, just like the bushes. And there's these random statues of clocks around, but other than this, everything else about this zone is pretty much not known. And there's sometimes these random empty pedestals with no statues on top, and each of these pedestals has a bronze card on it that says the Shavik. No clue what that means, but... I mean, it sounds pretty weird and creepy. I guess this zone is just a big area with purple bushes and grass and random statues of clocks. Pretty weird. So that's it for the documented zones of level negative 2, and there aren't any bases in any of them, but apparently Meg is trying to set up a base in the abyss. To enter level negative 2, you can enter any of the doors from level negative 1, or you can noclip through a yellow wall on level 13 to be sent here. To exits, you can find a set of out of place stairs randomly around the level, and they'll take you to level 14, or you can just find the entrance to level negative 3 which doesn't exist somehow, on any of the zones except for the pool. Nice. Next up for the video is level negative four, which is classified as a class undetermined because of some really weird and creepy mysterious properties that I'll get into in a second. Physically, it looks like a huge dark forest with literally no signs of human or animal life. Just a massive, untamed forest, pretty much. Everyone who enters this level always enters from the exact same spot, which just so happens to be inside of a barn that's been randomly placed in the middle of the woods. And this is actually the only structure on this level. Now, other than what I just said, this level is pretty much undocumented, and it's kind of hard to travel in because the compasses you have and the flashlights you could use, they'll randomly break or stop working when you're out in the woods. So it's kind of like the level doesn't want to be explored. There aren't any outposts here, but there's been a bunch of attempts by Meg to start one up, and all of them have failed. These are pretty creepy, so watch out. The first attempt was called Outpost Charity, and it was founded a year after Level Negative 4 was discovered. It was located right next to that barn you spawn in at, and the group that made this outpost was five Meg volunteers, which were given two months of supplies up front. They were supposed to distribute these supplies evenly among each other, but when the second supply crate got there and was dropped off, the five members never came to get it, so Meg sent out a search team to find them. They found the members in a circle around the original rations crate, and they were all holding hands, and they were all unalived due to malnutrition. None of the rations inside of the supply crate were even touched. It was completely full, but for some reason they were all holding hands standing around it and weren't even alive. That's terrifying. The next failed outpost was called Outpost Burns, and this was created four months after that first incident. 
This one had three members who lived without issue for three months, but when the fourth month came along, all three people vanished from the camp area. The only evidence left behind was actually a picture taken by one of the members while they were still at camp, and on the back of the picture it was written in scribbly handwriting, going north, don't follow. None of the three people were ever found again. The third failed out post is kind of lame. Pretty much it was four people who burned down their rations. Not gonna lie, that's kind of lame. Now the last failed outpost I'm going to talk about was called Outpost Red Forest. This actually was started by 13 people in a collaboration between Meg and the followers of Jerry. It was made right at the barn's entrance and it lasted a full 8 months before it fell. Out of all 13 members, only 3 survived and the ones that did survive have severe issues in their head right now. Apparently, the 10 that didn't make it were all unalived by an undocumented being called the Grey One. And just like the first time, these people were all in a circle holding hands inside of the barn. Not cool, bro. So if I had to guess, the entity that destroyed this outpost was also the same one that destroyed the first outpost as well. Kind of reminds me of the Blair Witch, though. If you've seen that movie, you know what I'm talking about. To enter this weird level, you can walk through one of the doors on level negative one, which will put you back in that barn, and to exit, all you have to do is wander into the woods, and you'll randomly noclip back to level negative one, or on to level negative five. So you've probably all seen this image before. It's an empty library with the end is near on the wall. But did you know that it was a backrooms level? In fact, it's an enigmatic level, so you already know it's going to be pretty wacky. The end is classified as a class undetermined, and is pretty much a trap level. Meaning that it gives you fake illusions that you've escaped the backrooms. These illusions can really mess with your mind because you think they're real, but they're not. The library itself is extremely quiet, which in and of itself can make you go insane, and the only noises that you can hear come from computers that buzz loudly. Now, as if the level couldn't get any worse, there's literally no way to leave the level that we know of, because of the physical properties that do not obey any physics or any Euclidean properties, and it makes exploring pretty much impossible. For example, you could just be walking in a completely straight line, but you'd actually be going in circles. Or you could be walking straight and then turn around and just face plant right into a wall. Pretty confusing. Now the abnormal physics and the quietness are bad, don't get me wrong, but the fake realities are way worse and way more detrimental to your mental health and physical health. Fake realities are highly personalized areas inside of the end that look like places that you've been to or places that you're familiar with from real life. The level can also replicate actual objects and people too, and it's all tangible and can be interacted with. So it literally seems real, and every fake reality that's been documented exists in similar areas and they seem to share these transitional spaces that kind of blur together like borders, and these are where the two fake realities will meet. If you walk through one of those areas, that reality will disappear and you'll be back in the library part. But for real though, hallucinating places that you've been or people that you know would be terrible, especially since you think it's real, so you would literally think that you're back in reality. It's also important to note that pretty much anything that uses Wi-Fi or electricity doesn't work here. So you can't radio for help or call for help or do anything. The only thing that does work that has any technology is those computers that are scattered around the level, but they're also really dangerous because for some reason entities, specifically party goers, like to hang out near them and capture prey. But some think that if you go on one of those computers and you run a specific .exe file on there, then you'll be sent to reality. Obviously no one knows if it works or not, but that would be pretty cool. There is actually surprisingly one base here called the Junkies. This one's pretty sad, but it's a ragtag group of six people who live inside of the fake reality areas of the level. They won't trade with you unless you give them memory juice, and they spend their entire day and night, pretty much their entire lives, high on memory juice inside of fake realities, pretending that they're in the real world. Wow, that's, that's sad, bro. 
to enter this level, you actually have a chance of entering here by going through any door that has a neon exit sign on it. And like I said earlier, there isn't even a confirmed exit, but it is theorized that you can noclip inside of one of those fake realities and you'll be sent to another level, but it's unknown and risky. But yeah, that was the end backrooms level. Honestly, it might be one of the scariest levels because of how much it can affect you physically and mentally both and just overall your morale. I mean, that's terrible. Just look at the junkies. They literally spend their entire lives so desperate that they drink memory juice and pretend that everything's real in a fake reality. I mean, that's literally just scary. Level 69 looks like a dark and empty infinite highway that has fog rolling at all times. Each side of the highway has massive concrete walls that seem to be infinite in height. And there's literally nothing else here. Like, that's it. The level is apparently so dangerous that you have to stay in the car when you spawn in. When you spawn in on this level, you'll spawn in in the car that you passed out in in level three to get here. That's the entrance to this level, more on that later. But if you stay in this car, you'll pretty much be safe. But if you leave the car, it's dangerous. Level 69 has a very low visibility because of the fog and the darkness that's on the level since it's constantly nighttime. In order to see anything at all, you have to use either the headlights from the car or a flashlight or something. This level is pretty unique because there are specific ways that you need to navigate it. And the start of the level is pretty much the same for everyone across the board because you wake up in the car that you passed out in from level three. Even if you somehow get here without passing out in a car on level three, you'll still wake up inside of a random car whenever you enter the level. But whatever you do, like I said, do not leave the car since, you know, it's dangerous and stuff. The fog and the entities that live here seem to be kind of scared of cars except for one entity. So it's pretty much a good way to scare off things if you just stay in your car and keep driving. Now, your car itself might have broken glass or broken AC or something like that. It's really just depending on the luck of the person there. So if you have bad luck, then you might have car problems. And if you have good luck, you won't. Driving this car physically is pretty much just like driving a car from real life. So you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. You also don't have to worry about running out of gas because these cars don't even have fuel tanks. Nice. So you can go full speed for as long as you want, since there's really nothing in the road, and you can just fly down the road at max speed. But there is always a risk of crashing into an entity or something like that. So pretty much you can either drive slow and waste a bunch of time, or you can drive really fast with a chance of perishing. So pick your poison. There are also hardly any supplies on this level. So the goal is to leave as soon as possible so you don't starve. The main normal entities here are smilers and wretches, which are extremely hostile on this level because they don't have anything else to eat. So when they see you, they, you know, they start drooling and get really aggressive. Wretches are considered to be extremely dangerous here because they can break into your car if you're parked or something like that. Or if you crash into one, it could cause your car to fly off the road into the concrete wall. You're just try to avoid them. Like imagine sitting in your car and trying to take a nap and then you wake up and see one of these things. Nice. Now this level also has a level exclusive entity called the beans from above. These are very mysterious and dangerous and they're pretty much one of the main reasons, if not the main reason that you should not get out of your car. Their exact body description isn't known, but their legs or arms look like spider legs or crab legs. You can't see them from the ground, obviously, because you'll be in a car. But if you were to get out of your car, a leg might fly down from above and spear right through you and then pick you up and carry you up into the darkness. It's kind of like that thing from King Kong, if you've seen that movie. There's only been a handful of survivors from an attack, and they say that the legs feel cold, slick, and completely solid. Oh yeah, and these entities literally cannot be taken down at all. People have tried bullets, explosions, knives, nothing works on them, so. This level also has a weird phenomena that happens called the Whispers. Now this might be an entity or just a weird occurrence that happens here, but pretty much there are these negative thoughts that go through your brain while you're on the level and they try to break down your mental health. So watch out for that, I guess. 
The easiest and most common way to enter this level is to pass out in a car on level 3 and you'll just wake up here. To exit the level, it's pretty simple. You just have to drive really far on the road and eventually you run across a tunnel that's carved into one of the sides of the concrete walls. Now you want to make sure you're either on the right or left side of the road because if you're in the middle, there's a chance you might miss this tunnel and you don't want to do that, trust me. So once you find the tunnel, just drive through it and you can only drive there for exactly 17 hours because then and at that point, your car will break down and stop working. After it stops working, you just have to get out and you have to walk through the rest of the length of the tunnel. But don't worry though, the tunnel is safe. There's no fog or no entities or anything like that. Just a normal tunnel. And this tunnel will lead to level 11. So it's pretty much worth it. There's also one unconfirmed exit as well. Some people have said that if you pass out while being attacked by a being from above, that you'll wake up in level zero. But I'm not gonna stick around and try to test that theory. So yeah, you got an infinite highway with huge concrete walls on each side and giant spider legs that come down from the sky to attack you. Love to see it. The hive is classified as a class five difficulty and is extremely unsafe. I mean, just look at it. According to the person who found this level, Toy Giwa, I, that's what I'm gonna say it as this whole video, so if that's wrong, just look at the spelling. The hive is a never-ending labyrinth of caves and caverns where the walls and the floors and the roofs are made of a fleshy tentacle-like material. The entire place is sprinkled with alien-ish looking eggs, specifically up the columns in the middle of the big caverns. That's where most of the eggs are. There's this light blue mist that flows through the caves and supposedly makes it pretty difficult to breathe. Now, Toy Gua, <laughs> which is the explorer that located this level, claims that he saw several creatures hatching from those eggs, like hounds, death moths, and crawlers. Which is interesting because those creatures are on almost every single level of the back rooms. He said that they were actually calm for a few minutes after they were hatched from those eggs, but then they turned aggressive, which is weird. And these eggs shine light on the theory that some backrooms creatures actually do reproduce and are not just spawned in. Toy Gua also said that there's a constant howling that echoes through the tunnels, presumably from a creature that is unknown, but there are a multitude of hostile creatures that live here. There's even one entity here that was previously undiscovered until it was discovered <laughs> called the High Queen. Now there's no details on her, but she's the High Queen, so... According to the database, the hive is the most dangerous level ever discovered in the back rooms, since, you know, there's entities spawning all the time, and the creatures that are already here are ready to attack you. Creatures like fish without skin, a giant sentient flesh bag that can move, and a sentient embryo that can supposedly control your mind. That's what Toy Gua said. I don't know. He also said he escaped this level by wandering down a tunnel from a cavern that led directly to level zero. He said when he went through the threshold into level zero, he turned around and the tunnel was gone. Apparently this guy had leaked some secret information from Meg and Meg didn't want that to be leaked. So they were chasing after him and he was on the run and he no clipped through level six's floor and ended up in the hive. But there still is not a concrete way to enter the hive as of right now because it was just random that he did. But you can exit it just by following one of the tunnels from the caverns and they lead to a multitude of different levels. My personal theory on the hive is that it's kind of like the heart of the back rooms per se. And I think this dude got here just by complete accident. I don't know, maybe all the creatures come from here. Maybe the back rooms is a living, breathing entity and this is where everything's born from. I don't know. Leave a comment down below if you want to see a my backrooms theories video. All right, that was it for this mega video of the most dangerous backrooms levels. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you want to help the channel get to 500k subs so I can buy the backrooms pants, I would appreciate it if you dropped the sub. Like I said, I hate asking for it. I, I've never done it before. It just the backroom pants are calling me, guys. And make sure to check out the sponsor of today's video, Jim Stone Legends, in the description, pinned comments, or by using the QR code on the screen. Thank you all for sponsoring the video very much. Go check them out to support the channel and to check out an awesome game. Thank you for everybody for watching. Go so to my second channel. Go check what I got over there. We're having a fun time over there. It's, it's just, it's awesome. What can I say? Thank you for everything. I will see you in the next video.